happen. Who's got an idea for my second point? Well, what was my first point in general? X comma F of X. What was my second point for the secant slope? Yes, X plus, yeah, so A plus H comma F of A plus H. So I'm going to do a second point, A plus H comma F of A plus H. Now, tell me, yes, we're okay, you need help, what, tell me, talk to me. Yes, we're okay, nice. Now watch what happens when I do this and then make sure that you're, you're checking yours as well. If I move A, you see the distance between my two points and I'm talking about X distance doesn't change. These two points are always one away from each other. So for example, when, I, when the first point is at one, look where the, second, the X value of the second point is at two. Do you see that on my screen? And then if I change H, you see, the, just the other point moves further away. So now it's 1.5 away. So the first x is at 1. The second x is at 2.5. Is that clicking with everybody? Now, what do I want to do is I want to create the secant line through the two points, right? So let's, let's think about that on the side here. So I had uh, A comma F of A, and I had A plus H comma F of A plus H. And I'm gonna use y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. So what does that become? y minus what? f of a equals d dx of f of x times x minus a. d dx is the operator for derivative. Uh, but I made a mistake there. What should that actually be? Not, d, not f of x, but d, d, d dx definitely of f of what? F of A, F of A. So here we go. I'm going to type that in now into Desmos. Y minus F of A equals D fraction DX right arrow F of X, sorry, F of A times in parenthesis X minus A. And it's not correct. It might need DDA. <laughs> well, all right, give me a second. I know, because I have to evaluate it at A. So I, I think I have to, I can't do it this way. I already know what my derivative is, right? It's, it's 1 minus 2a. So I'm going to put that in, 1 minus 2a. There it is. No, that's not working. Sorry. All right, give me a second. <laughs> give me a second.
No, oh, I know what I have to do. Sorry. No, oh, yeah, I got to do this. So I'm going to put, I'm going to create a new function first, sorry. And that function is going to be, no, sorry. I got it. I got it. Trust me. Ah, uh, f of a plus h minus f of a. Give me one second. Let me make sure it works before you do it divided by h there it is ha! i have to put the whole slope in right you with me so that i connect to the two points so y minus f of a equals the slope times f minus a Dynamic secant line. And what's kind of nice here is I can calculate the slope, right? I can just calculate F of A plus H minus F of A all divided by H. So I can actually see my slope there at any point, right? Say again? Yeah, yeah. So, so this is what I did. Sorry. I did... Um, Right, I put that slope in front of there. So this is actually the dynamic secant line, not a tangent line, right? Now I can figure out, so if you, if you take a look at what I've done here, I'm going to set A to be 1. And I'm going to let H go to 0, right? I can I can I can really set my uh, uh, I can set my my H step to go really really slow. Uh oh, there we go. And look, I can I can get really really close and try and make a prediction. What do you think? Where do you think it's going to? Negative, Negative one. What do we say the slope was? We said the slope was right. We said the derivative was one minus two x, right? And if I let x be one. I get 1 minus 2 times 1, which is 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. Right? You following me?
Now watch the beauty of this. Watch this. I'm going to put in, I'm going to change my function. Everything else will change. Sine of x. <laughs> Look at that sucker. I can just change my function and it will do exactly what I want it, right? I could change my function to the pro problem in 2.1 number 5. What was it? 40x minus 16x squared, right? And then we were interested in 2, right? And so I can get my secant slopes, right? I can get my secant slopes. Where do you look at look at it? I'm doing your homework problem for you right here. Where do you think it's going? What's your guess? Negative twenty four. Yeah, in the uh, formula, yeah, it's probably easier to see it here. Is it working for everybody? Yeah. Oh yeah, I changed the and how 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 do you want it to move by the step, right? Everybody's cool? So I would say, especially my computer science guys, can you clean this up for me a little bit more? I want you to create for me a dynamic secant line, and I'd like you to replace the slope with a, with a simpler function. Yes, you with me? I would also like you to be able to graph the tangent line at a f of a. So I, I would see two lines when h is not zero. I see one line here that's a tangent line. And then I see my secret line. So I'm asking you to create a brand new version of this. Make the slope look prettier on the machine. Like M of X, like a slope, M of A, right? So create a function earlier here that I can just put in that simple function for my slope, right? And I also want you to have the tangent line graph. I want to be able to control the secant line by moving A or H, and I want the tangent line to move if I move A. Does that make sense? And then email it to me, okay?
I'm not writing that down, but you got it, right? Nice. Let's do uh, a couple more shortcuts. Uh, let's see. Uh, y equals sine of x implies that if I take y prime or the derivative of sine, I get y prime equals cos of x. That's the shortcut. You're going to memorize it. I will prove it to you later. And if y equals cos of x, who knows it? Negative sine of x. I, I use a little uh, a circle for that. I use an alphabet circle. So I'm going to write the alphabet uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, N, O, P, Q, R, S. When I go in that direction, derivative of cosine to sine, you see it passes the, the letter N, so it passes the negative. So derivative of cosine is negative sine. When I go from sine to cosine, do I pass a negative? No. So derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is negative sine. Uh, if y equals the ln of x, y prime equals 1 over x. If I do the tangent line there, right, uh, what do I get? I get y minus ln of a equals 1 over a times x minus a. Where, where the hell am I getting that from? Right. What, what the hell is going on? So I'm going to start a clean file on Desmos. Of course, you if you're logged into Desmos, you can save the one you just did, right? But I'm just going to create a brand new one because I'm lazy. And I'm going to do um, y equals ln of x. Sorry. There's my function. I want to pl plot the point a comma ln of a. And I want to plot that tangent line. y minus, oops, ln of a equals 1 over a times x minus a. Sweet. Tangent line. One point, right? Remember the dynamic secret line I want you to do. I want you to have the tangent line fixed at point A. A, F, A. Right? So even if I change A, if I change my x coordinate, right? My tangent line will move. But then I'll also see my secant line, right? And then when I let h go all the way to zero, I'll see my secant line become my tangent line, right? You with me? The shortcuts I'll explain later in chapter three, okay? So right now we just want to memorize, or you can get a tattoo. If you, I, I feel like if you go through that level of dedication and get a tattoo, it's not cheating. Just make sure you get the tattoo somewhere where you don't have to take clothes off during the test, right? That's a joke. I'm joking.
I've been asked, if you got a mathematical tattoo, what would it be? I said, a decimal point. <laughs> one, one needle. <laughs> Done. That'll be $100. Good, let's do another derivative. Um, let's say f of x is 1 over x. Anybody know what the derivative of that is? So if I said ddx of f of x, that should equal ddx of, of 1 over x. So I should get f prime. I'm just trying to get you used to the notation here, right? What, anybody know it? Have it memorized? What's the derivative of 1 over x? It's minus 1 over x squared. Good, let's do it the long way. Ready? The limit as h goes to 0 of what? 1 over what? x plus h minus, one over x. nice, 1 over x, all divided by h. On your mark and set, go. So star is 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x, all divided by h. Who's taking Calc 2 in the fall? Who'd you get? Who'd you take it away? Who? You don't, you don't. No, it's not me. I'm not. I'm only Calc 1. The high school kid. Zero done already? Oh, thinking. Anybody get the LCD correctly? Or the common denominator? This is an LCD, but anyone get that correct? Nice.
Anybody get there? Nice. Anybody else? No? Yes, nice. Two out of two out of nine, that's not bad. Three. Three out of nine. Pretty damn good. I want nine out of nine of you to pass. It will be my first semester ever. Everyone has to support. In California. I always pass everybody in stats. It's all but dead, right? You don't have to take another class that's the stats. Do I have just three and a nine? Do I have another one? Four and a nine? Anyone? No? Go on once? Twice? Why not? Is the algebra too hard? No. Is the process too hard? Yes. But you're going to put the process written down. Right? When I teach you how to do the chain rule, or the product rule, the closure rule, you put down the process so that when you go to do your test or your quiz and it say, find the derivative using the product rule, you can instantly look at your product rule. And better than that, practice. You have to practice over and over. So f prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of star, which is negative 1 over x times x plus 0, which is negative 1 over x squared. There it is. Just like our shortcut said. Everybody okay? This actually can be done with the shortcut, not just memorized. We want to memorize everything, at least until we're, we, we've graduated, right? We want to memorize, well, most of the time when you're, when you, well, in physics, you're going to be using your derivatives and your integrals all, all the time, okay? Um, in linear, probably not. When you're programming, no. You're just going to say derivative. You'll use the, the derivative class uh, in, in, in computer science, right? So, so you will, but we want you to experience how this derivative is created and what does it do, right? And so that's what we're, we're dealing with in Calc 1. Um, but this one is a shortcut, right? Y equals 1 over X is X to the minus 1. This is a power. A x to a power is a power rule. And so what do I get for y prime? I bring down the power, so I bring down a minus 1, and then I reduce the power by 1, right? It's a negative 1 minus 1. Bring down the power, reduce the power by 1. So I get negative 1 times x to the negative 2, and of course a negative exponent means reciprocal. So this is a short, shortcut, right? And I know some of you are going, well, why do I have to do it the long way if I can just do the shortcut? Because I want you to understand it, that's why, right? If I only know one way to get home and that road is closed, what the hell are you gonna do? So we wanna, we wanna be able to, right, really have true knowledge of what's going on, of how to get home. What, notice what is happening here in this line. What, what do you see that's happening? What's happening there? And why, why is it essential that it happens? The H is cancel, right? So why is it essential? Because if I let H go to zero before I cancel them, I get zero over zero. Look at, look at the other one we did. Where the hell is it? Right here. Look at look at what happened. Look at what happened here, right? Notice everything in the numerator has has a factor of what in it? H. It has to. If it doesn't, it won't cancel. If you look at what happened in the line above, 
Look at what got crossed out. Pieces that don't have a factor of H in them. So that's a hint, it's hinting to you that you better be able to get H to cancel. Otherwise, you did something wrong. Nice. Let's. I want to do one more thing, and then we'll take a little break, okay? And, and remember, when we're in class, if you have to take a break, please, feel free. You don't have to ask me or nothing, right? You need a cup of coffee. Go get a cup of coffee. You need to have a smoke. Go have a smoke. Be careful about that one, though, right? Watch what you're smoking and where you're smoking. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll be taking a break every class from now on. First day, uh, I just... With the computer, the room move, I couldn't take it. I didn't want to take a break. Second day, because I knew I was leaving early, I didn't want to take a break. But uh, I know it's a lot. This is another little side project I want you to do. I want you to show that a vertical or horizontal shift of a function does not change the derivative. Show the vertical or horizontal shift of a function will not change the derivative. So, so what I'm saying is, right, so for example, let me use the square root of x, okay, as my, as my mother function. I, I like to say mother function because it sounds like I'm cursing, but like the book will call it a family of functions. And the one that's at the origin is the, is the, the parent function. I say mother function, though, right? So if I shift this guy, let's say over to here, or I shift it up to here, those derivatives will not change. So this one is what? y equals square root of x plus 2. And this one is y equals square root of x, sorry, quantity plus 2. Right? So this, this one, uh, so what I'm saying is uh, my slope right here, yeah? So if I'm at, at the same point on the mountain, wherever I move the mountain, left, right, up, down, my skis are going to be the same slope, right? Does that make sense? Right? So, so meaning if I just put my slope there or my slope here or my slope here, they'll all be the same. So you're going to pick a function, up to you, right? Vertical shift, horizontal shift, get the derivative, show that it makes sense that I get that same derivative. Uh, this function is square root of x. That's x to the what? Half power, yeah. And so y prime is 1 half times x to the 1 half minus 1. That's 1 half of x to the minus 1 half. That's 1 over 2 square roots of x. Agreed? Yes? Please make sure you look at it. Make sure you agree. So what's my first derivative here? What's y prime here? 1 over 2 square roots of x. What's y prime up here? What's y prime there? Well, square root of x, the derivative I already told you, it's 1 over 2 square roots of x, right? And then what's the derivative of 2? 
zero. So it's, it's it. The, you see it? When I, when I shift up, it doesn't change the derivative. When I move the mountain up and I'm frozen in time on the mountain, my skis have, still have the same slope. Right? This one is a little bit tougher. Anybody got it? 1 over 2 square roots of what? Hmm? Yeah. So what, what happens when I do a, a horizontal shift is my derivative gets the horizontal shift. When I do a vertical shift, the derivative doesn't change at all. And I'm saying this derivative didn't change at all left or right. Right? Because I just put the shift into the derivative. Let's do that one by hand, and then we'll take our break. I keep... Yeah, that's good. So if y equals f... Oh, sorry. Square root of x plus 2, y prime is the limit as h goes to 0 of what? What am I putting inside the first radical? Nice, x plus h plus 2. And the second radical, it's the original function, x plus 2, all over h, right? And I'm going to call that thing star. And what am I going to do? I used to sit in the back in, in my calc class, and I would at this point I would yell out, conjugate on with it. Get it? No, not funny. I guess I guess you're right. My teacher didn't think I was funny either. So I'm using the conjugate of the radical piece over itself. Yes, you agree? Good. Finish. I didn't show the
Thank you. Let's take a little break. Come back in at 20 of 2. So we've got 14 minutes, okay? Yeah. Yeah, I guess my, my wording wasn't perfect, but it's just showing it's showing that it's the same derivative, 1 over 2 square roots of, but put the shift in. Yeah, the, the derivative of that constant is just a zero. But again, I want you I want you thinking, here's the hill. Here I am with the skis. If I move it up, skis are the same slope. If I move it over, skis are the same slope. Exactly, exactly. Because just so I'm just saying that. Is this a two thing there? No, no. That's what's crazy. Um, so, uh, right, it's just, and, and my wording is, I guess my wording isn't perfect, right? But I'm saying I got my square root of x function, right? And I got my slope here. And if I move the whole thing over, right, that's going to be the same slope. So what, what takes care of it is the shift.